We're now joined by Mr. Sunil Dubey, the Metropolis, Metropolis Country Director for India. Welcome to you, Sunil. Thank you. Thank you, Yasu. Um, India, a country with many challenges, a prospering country, and we obviously a South Africa part of BRICS. Uh, how do you see the role of Metropolis making a difference in the, in the lives of ordinary Indians, for that matter? Let me first quickly say this is my first visit to Johannesburg, and I'm absolutely amazed with the amount of work this city has done to make this city safer. To give you an example, one of the biggest challenges what Metropolis faces today is how do we develop bilateral linkages between the cities for them to prosper, for them to work together, some key challenges. And in that regard, I see Johannesburg has got a huge potential. So are the other cities from South Africa and other big nations to work together with a number of Indian cities and the cities which are going through amazing challenges of rapid urbanization. If you look at it, what really challenges, what really makes people to take, make people feel proud about city is the number one issue or the number one challenge we see in Metropolis is the safety. Mm. The safety <coughs> is far more connected with people's pride in these cities, in the developing cities. Well, you, you take India, I mean, the, the rape of a young lady um, not only mobilized Indians, but mobilized the world against, against rape, uh, which shows you of, of what needs to be done. Absolutely correct. And this, this is an example which brings all of us to start thinking that how issues in one city can effectively make some larger changes in other cities. What happens in India is not unique. What happened in that particular case, in fact, brought out some major policy changes which are directly affecting the cities. And these cities are not only in India, these cities are all over the world. To give you an example, one of the major things which came out of this incident, this very dreadful incident, is the lack of public infrastructure, lack of city infrastructure. A simple usage of cameras mm. could have resolved number of issues, could have prevented number of these issues. And what our focus is from Metropolis, to take number of these challenges on board and bring the cities together to work, to find solutions among themselves. Because there are leaders, and there are going to people who are very happy to learn from that leadership. The way I see it is Metropolis is that platform. Metropolis is the platform where all these collective thinkings are coming, all the leaders from the cities are coming together and want to openly discuss these issues. I spoke about safety because safety has got the most fundamental issue in human life, especially in developing cities we find when people feel safe, they are effectively willing to contribute to the larger community activities. They are willing to contri contribute towards larger political debate, and they are willing to contri contribute actively towards the democratic process. So I would put safety, public infrastructure, and then looking at communities' involvement in the policy making are the three major challenges. Let, let's take India. I would, I would assume that housing is your number one priority, getting people into decent homes. Decent housing, absolutely. Yeah. Decent housing is a big challenge, and it is a top priority in Indian urbanization. Well, let's take another challenge for you, which is not only a, a challenge for the, for the Indian people, but uh, for the world is the issue around pollution and, and caring for the environment. How do you see your metropolitan municipalities in India dealing with, with that particular problem, the problem of pollution, and, and having clean cities, I mean, it's a major problem. It is, it is, and you rightly mentioned about this challenge, and uh, what I would like to, to provide a very brief example that how it is connected, how the sustainability or the climate issues are connected. I live in a city of Sydney, which is one of the most beautiful cities. We do our best to keep the city clean. And this is not driven just by the government policies. These are driven by citizens. 
citizens take pride in making their city more sustainable by taking their activities more sustainable. What happens in a port, for example, or in the southern belt of India, in fact, affects directly to the cities in Australia. And this is the connectivity. In terms of Indian cities, I think the capacity in addressing those issues are a big challenge for Indian local governments. Then also implementing some of these policies at the ground level, where people in the cities are going through their own learning, is another learning-based challenge to India. So India is taking step forwards towards addressing these issues. It's a long journey for India, because as the middle income group rises, as we have society which is moving upward, people are going to demand more resource intense uh, products, mm. for example, cars. Mm, sure. So car in India is seen as a symbol. Achieving something in the society, and then we have to go through the education program to give them proper ethos about why the climate is going to be a much bigger issue. And for cities of, in India, this is going to be uh, one of the top priorities to address. India and South Africa are both part of the BRICS formation. How do you see BRICS playing a role in, in going forward? Uh, a very important platform, obviously. It is, it is, Yusuf. Uh, to give you an example, when we talk about BRICS, we are talking not just the BRICS countries, the five countries together. In fact, we are talking of more than half of the humanity on this planet. Mm. This is a fundamental message we have to put in focus, that BRICS is not about just five countries communicating and addressing issues. BRICS is about what are we going to do about more than half of the human population on this planet. Now the challenge which lies ahead, not only for BRICS, for other nations as well, how we can effectively work together. And I think the way forward in BRICS is going to be driven by the cities. Cities are going to be major players in the BRICS activities. Cities are going to play a very strong partnership roles. So for example, the city of Johannesburg might decide to work actively with the city of Hyderabad on a number of issues which has got a common objectives. And having two cities working together, what we find in our studies in Metropolis, it develops a much stronger bilateral business and trade opportunities. And that's where we see the BRICS is going to be driven, not at a very broadly at a national level, but it also be effectively working at a city level and a smaller regional or the state level. And that's where I have a strong affiliation towards BRICS that the results are going to be much quicker. Of course, there are challenges which are more administrative and functional cha challenges, but I think the move is quite strong. And as I said, the fundamental to that is if we are addressing more than half of the human population, we have no other option than to work together. What do you think is going to come out from, from the conference? Um, it's a whole week of discussions. Do you believe any firm and concrete decisions will come out from here, which we can all learn from? I, I believe these kind of conferences and get-togethers are very important for the cities. They are very important for the city administrator, but most importantly, they are very important for the city decision-makers or elected members. What comes out of this conference is only the first step towards a long journey in cities engagement. This is this forum or this conference here is not going to give you a ready-made solution. What it would give you a very strong platform where two cities, three cities, a number of others number of cities might want to work together to address a specific issue. For example, we have got a very strong focus on safer cities, where we're bringing cities from all over the world to say, how do we make our cities safe? And let's face it, if cities are safe, they are termed caring cities. So if the Safe Cities platform can bring top leaders from five or six cities, I believe what we have done, we have started the dialogue, we have looked at it, what policies work, and we also looked at it where we cannot reinvent the wheel. The important thing, it gives you some solutions which has worked effectively in reducing the crime and making cities more safe. 
for example, the Mexico City, mm. has strongly shown the results that by implementing policies at the ground level, which means they implemented a lot of technology, the cities are now much more safer in Mexico. And those kind of examples would make cities' bilateral relationships stronger. Lastly, Sunil, the, the role of ordinary citizens, the ratepayer. I know in India you've got uh, the Lead India initiative. In South Africa, we've got Lead South Africa. How do you see the role of ordinary citizens rolling up their sleeves and trying to create not only safer cities, but, but better cities? What our research shows, shows in Metropolis, that citizens are the fundamental unit of the bigger debate we are talking. The important participation every citizen can make is to feel part and parcel and a strong stakeholder of the city's decision. What we try to do is to develop tools where citizens are heard effectively by the decision makers and the elected members. Mm. The missing link, what we believe, or what is demonstrated through the research, is not necessarily the citizens are going to have a one-to-one -one dialogue with the leaders, but they need mechanism and they need systems in a place where their voices could be heard. In most of our cases, what we are finding, that if we put fewer systems, and these systems could be an ordinary uh, dialogue through debates, interactive debates, it could be using the web channels, it could be using uh, social networking forums to say people are really focused about particular issues and particular issues concerning the safety of the cities and once the leadership and the city administrators know about it, I'm quite sure they take note of these things. I think it's creating the systems, creating those platforms are a lot more important where the citizens feel that their voices are correctly heard. And this way, I think they feel in an engaged citizens and strong stakeholder in the city. And that way the communication starts and that's where the proud city and a caring city actually moves forward. Thank you very, very, very much, uh, Mr. Sunil uh, Dubey, the Metropol Metropolis Country Director for India. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing some of your perspectives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, thank you, you for your time. Good. Thank you.